Well, welcome to the Revangelical Connection. My name is Brandon Robertson, and today I'm connecting you with Dr. Andrew Farley. For those of you who might not know, Dr. Farley is the best-selling author of The Naked Gospel and God Without Religion. He's also the lead pastor of Ecclesia, an evangelical church in West Texas, and among and that's just one of his many other things that he does. Um, he's also the author of a new fiction book being published by Baker Books, and that's what we're talking to him about today. It's called Operation Screwtape. Dr. Farley, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, well, thank you, Brandon. And so, as I said, uh, your new uh, your new book is called Operation Through Tape, The Art of Spiritual Warfare. Can you tell us a little bit about what that book's about? Yeah, you know, uh, well, of course, C.S. Lewis wrote the Screw Tape Letters, and uh, now we're looking at the anniversary of his death here. And uh, so in the year that we are looking at that, I essentially, I just wanted to put out a uh, modern day rendition, a sequel, if you will, uh, and w- all new themes in the book, uh, totally different um, perspective in terms of the second book. Uh, it, it looks at the issue of grace and uh, really focuses in on the Christian as opposed to the unbeliever. And uh, what kinds of things does the enemy not really want us to understand, to grasp more fully as believers? Um You know, I mean, it's great that we're saved and we have our fire insurance, so to speak, but we're living 30, 50, 70 years on this planet. And what is it that the enemy uh, is doing in our lives? Uh, You know, Ephesians tells us we have an enemy. Uh, Clearly, there's fiery darts being launched at us. But what do these fiery darts look like? in today's world and i guess i kind of feel like uh a lot of christians we've been stuck in the mentality that uh satan and his demons are just these uh horned devils that uh are tempting us to do evil all the time but even if you look back at the earliest temptation in the garden it wasn't a temptation to do a bunch of evil looking stuff it was in fact a temptation to you know in the day you eat of this you will be like god You will be godlike. You will be godly. So, you know, the sales pitch was essentially a form of godliness. And uh, if we don't watch it, we're suckers for the same sales pitch today. Wow. And that's a really good point. And what made you kind of take on this C.S. Lewis task of writing theological fiction? And like you said, it's coming up on its anniversary. But were there any other reasons for writing a book like this? Yeah, you know, I had written The Naked Gospel and God Without Religion and Heaven Is Now. You know, one of those was uh, essentially my my story of coming to the end of myself. I mean, just really hitting a spiritual burnout and then uh, starting over and asking God to show me where I was wrong in so many areas. And that was The Naked Gospel. And then God Without Religion was like a follow-up. I got thousands of email questions from people who'd read The Naked Gospel and so then I used God Without Religion as a chance to really respond to that. Um, and then Heaven Is Now was altogether different. It's like a, um, a devotional uh, type book. And so then I just decided I wanted to really switch gears and do something different. I'd never written a fiction book before. And yet I didn't want to write a story just to entertain people. Um, you know, if you know anything about my writing, I, I'm very much into – content, uh, content content-rich, content-heavy writing. And so this gave me a a platform for uh, still being rich in content, but at the same time, uh, I think it's it's a very entertaining way to to do it. Mm, Absolutely. And yeah, just like the the endorsement on the back of the book says that it really is a very entertaining book, but like you said, it also has some really deep uh, concepts that I actually wasn't expecting in this book. And that was leads me into the next question. When I picked it up, I thought it was going to be a book on spiritual warfare, and yet it contains so, so, so much more than that. Um, It's everything from the gospel to uh, how we live our Christian life, and it seems that this book might actually be kind of a wake-up call to Christians, maybe Christian teachers, who aren't realizing the full effect of the gospel in their lives. Was this one of your motives? Was this kind of the idea behind the book? Yeah, I think it gives an opportunity to give that wake up call without calling out names and, you know, focusing on individuals. But at the same time, we're seeing these issues. I mean, you know, there are are people that are teaching things that I at least believe are very contrary to some of the foundational truths of the gospel. I mean, today, if you tell a person they're totally forgiven of all their sins, no matter what, uh, you know, apparently some Christians won't even agree with that. 
Uh, it's controversial to tell people they're forgiven. Uh, so, you know, the enemy latches on to that sort of teaching and that sort of doubt and that sort of insecurity. And so, you know, for example, one thing in the book that's talked about is just how can, how does the enemy water down the gospel? How does the enemy dilute uh, the truth of our forgiveness and the truth of our acceptance and keep us in fear, uh, keep us in insecurity. And so, yeah, it's a wake up call, uh, definitely. But I, at the same time, I, I guess, you know, from one chapter to the next, a person might feel like a particular chapter or two or three are intensely waking them up to the possibility of change. And then other times they're just nodding their head saying, yeah, I see what you're saying, and I agree with that. I, I don't need any further thought needed. So it kind of depends on which chapter you're in. Yeah, definitely. I, I totally see that. And the other part, kind of on that same line, was I found myself, as I was reading through the book, stopping at some point and saying, ouch, because there are some things that you really had on addressed. Um, and you've really gotten some major issues that you've confronted in this book, like you've been talking about. Have you gotten any feedback on this kind of thing? Yeah, you know, the first readers are just reading it right now. In fact, uh, the book released January 1 on Amazon, but January 15 uh, in stores. So we are right at the beginning of this. I've had uh, a number of people in my circle read it and give me feedback, and they definitely think it's the most uh, potent book that I've written yet in terms of potential reaction. I think it can be. Uh, and again, I guess we're talking about which chapter you're in, but some things are going to be very polarizing, uh, sort of a love it, hate it type thing. Um, and, you know, in my view, uh, people can take or leave a given topic in the book, um, and, and that's just the, the nature of reading anything uh, that's related to the gospel. You know, it's hard enough for Christians to agree on much of anything these days, but the discussion is fun, and uh, that's, that's why I did it. Yeah. And so what was the, what's the hardest part of writing a fiction book? Like you said, this is a new genre for you. What was the most difficult thing you were confronted with? Um, well, I just think uh, the variety of vocabulary. I worked really hard to uh, make sure that every chapter truly was different, uh, that the language, you know, I'm adopting a language here that's really not my own, um, the, the, the language of deception, the language of combat, the language of... Uh, of, you know, um, basically this devious mindset um, and at the same time wanting a Christian reader to be able to read it and see the opposite. In other words, you know, here's the deception of the enemy, but then here's the the corollary truth uh, that is the polar opposite that the enemy's trying to hide. So, you know, uh, David Gregory, um, a friend of mine who endorsed the book, uh, you know, he talks about these astounding realities that the enemy will do anything to keep from us. And that's, that's what I was wanting to do with this fiction approach is say, you know, there's some powerful truths of the gospel that we could live our entire lives and miss out on if uh, we just succumb to whatever popular teaching is. Just because something is popular, attracting masses of people, doesn't mean that it's the truth that sets us free. Mm. Yeah, and that's right on. And so kind of what is the one big thing that you would want people who do read this book and pick it up to walk away with? Yeah, you know, I, I think uh, the bottom line is that we are very clean and close to God. We're clean and close, and yet, um, you know, dirty and distant is sort of the... Uh, common takeaway from a whole lot of messages we might hear that we need to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps that God is disappointed in us do more and be more and be radical and do more and be more and you just hear it over and over again yeah. and couched in this sort of package or this package but you know Christians I think if we added up everything that we're told that we need to do more of it would just be an incredible list that you could never get to the end of. You'd never feel like you arrived or were okay with God. And so I think, you know, the average person sitting in a pew or in a chair in, in a church in the United States, um, they hear about grace uh, when it comes to that initial birth, uh, that salvation experience. Um, but as far as waking up every day and living in grace, living under grace, living by grace, uh, that's that's what I hope the takeaway is 
for the average reader who's looking at Operation Screwtape. I definitely think they will get that message. It's, like I said, a very entertaining but also theologically rich and convicting book. And kind of the last thing to kind of wrap it up is what's next for you? Now that you've done, like you said, devotional kind of uh, literature and now you have fiction, what are you going to be working on next? Yeah, well, I just finished a book. Uh, I can't give out too much information about it yet. We're about six months away from it coming out. But uh, there's a well-known uh, Christian band that has teamed together with me, and they're going to be taking the book around to all of their concerts. And it's essentially a book for young Christians, young believers. Um, and I'm excited that all the concert goers will get exposed to it. So about July or August is when that book will release. And it's, again, it's something totally new for me to team up with a Christian music band and, uh, and put something out that's for the baby Christian, uh, for the, even for the unbeliever who's inquiring about the gospel. So it'll be very evangelistic in that sense. Oh, wow. Very cool. Well, I definitely look forward to that. And, um, thank you so much for taking time to join us on Raven Dell's Connection today. For all of you who are watching, you can pick up Dr. Farley's new great book, uh, Operation Screwtape, on Amazon.com and anywhere books are sold. And, uh, yeah, thank you so much once again, Dr. Farley, for joining us. Hey, thank you, Brandon.